So you want to make a railing for your porch, but you don't want to make the same old boring generic railing everybody's got. You want to make something nice, something unique with some quality. Me too. I'm John from Farmcraft and uh, I like to build things from scratch. I like to build them with character, uh, with a little unique touch to them. So let's make a railing. First you've got to start with a good design and the right proportions. If you don't get the proportions right, it doesn't matter how great of a job you do, it's just not going to look right. I got this railing design from a historic home renovation professional and I think the railing came out great. Uh, so I made this video and I've included in it all the specifications, dimensions, everything that a person would need to be able to build this for yourself. We're starting with hickory lumber straight out of the kiln, dried to 10% moisture content. First let's start with the bottom rail. Here's a cross section of this railing. This is your bottom rail. That's a 14 degree angle there. Helps a lot with shedding water and keeping dirt from building up because it is exterior. And then it has a bead on the outside that adds a nice touch. Start out just cutting to rough lengths. Uh, I usually leave an extra foot or so and then I'll cut it to final dimension later. And start planing them down. I'm starting with the bottom rail because it is the thickest and longest of the boards that I will need. So I want to make sure that I get the hardest ones to get out of my lumber stack first. Some of the boards will have imperfections that make them unsuitable for the bottom rail, but I can use them for other parts of the build. Lots of planing. And I finally get down to one and three quarter inches thickness. Now I run one edge on the joiner to straighten it. I will put this straight edge against the fence of the table saw in the next step. You can see how the board is now running flat on the table with no gaps under it. Now I'm cutting them to width. The bottom rail needs to be four inches. And while you're doing this, you're trying to look at the wood and cut off the imperfections to keep the best possible piece for your final product. Now I have to put a groove on each board. And then I put the bead on. Moving my table saw to 14 degrees and after adjusting the fence to the right position I'm ready to cut the angle. Finally I run them through the sander and the bottom rails are ready to go. Going to the top, the top pieces are actually two pieces. This I call the handrail, this is the top rail. And the picket goes up inside this dado in the top rail. Uh, that also helps for water shedding because water can't get to the end grain of the pickets. And then the handrail is just screwed on on top of that. So more roughing and planing, then joining and cutting to final width. I'm using hickory not because it's the best wood for this project, but I had a lot of hickory logs and I figured I might as well use them. But boy, it's challenging to work with. Very hard and extremely heavy. So there I'm putting the cove on the top rail. and then putting the groove on the bottom that the pickets will fit up into. You see I flipped the board around there 
That guarantees that your groove will be directly in the center of the board. Here you'll see it again. I cut the one, flip it around, and cut it again. And the handrail, I skip the roughing and planing and everything. I just have a five inch by inch and a quarter board and I put a three eighths inch round over on all four corners. And now the pickets, which were so much easier because they're short and you can cut out imperfections and things in the wood. Here you can see the joiner flattening that board. And cutting many, many pickets. And that's a 14 degree angle again. Here I'm setting a stop block so all the pickets will be exactly the same. So I've cut one to the length that I want. Do some adjusting by tapping the stop block, then I'll do a test cut. And they match up well, so I throw another clamp on there. And then I start cutting pickets. I cut about 120 pickets for this job. It's cold outside, so I went ahead and primed all of the wood while in the shop where I could control the temperature. I did quite a bit of sanding, both in the sander and by hand, before actually doing this priming. And moving on to installation. I need to put a board here because the railing is going to end where the siding is. So I cut a board that's the right length. And now I am scribing the profile of the siding on that board using a compass. I do some more scribing later in the video. And I'm just filling in the bottom of the siding and then cutting it out on the bandsaw. and I'm putting a 45 along the top to shed water. And it fits. Now I'm measuring for the bottom rail and top rail. And here's the bottom rail. Once I know I have it the right length, I take it off and seal the ends. That'll help a lot with preventing rotting in the future. I get it level and screw it in place. Had a problem with the camera, so lost some footage. Uh, I cut this top rail the same way as the bottom rail, just cutting it to length and then sealing the ends. Uh, then I take a picket on each end and put it in position, use a level to get it perfectly plumb. And, uh, and then screw it down. And I did the same thing on the other end that's out of frame here. Uh, and then you just lay the top rail on top of that. You don't measure where this should be. You let the pickets, which are all exactly the same length, uh, determine the position of that board. And then you screw that board down uh, and then you're ready to put your, your filling uh, pickets in. This is Google SketchUp. So this is how I figure my picket spacing. I've got 99 inches between the posts. Here's my picket, which is seven eighths wide, one and a quarter deep. And I need at least four inches of spacing, or at most four inches between the posts, between the pickets. Let me select this guy and copy him. So doing a move copy all the way across and then I'm going to, let's just try 12 divide. Way too wide, so how about 18 divide? 
still too wide. 20 divide. Just a hair too wide. So 21 divide. That's my spacing. So now I measure it. It's 3 and 51 sixty fourths. That's a lovely dimension. You actually want to go slightly smaller because it's hard to get the boards to fit perfectly when you're assembling. So three and three quarters is what I used. This is the end of part one. Be sure to look out for part two where I do some uh, more complicated details, scribing boards uh, against moldings, and also have all the additional specifications needed to build the railing. I also recently started a Patreon account. Uh, please consider supporting me there uh, for more content in the future. The link is below and thanks for watching.